Hello, Christ United Methodist Church friends and family. It's Pastor Jeremiah coming to you at this week's Upper Room devotional. And tonight's is titled Embracing Obstacles. And it comes from Maine, USA from Patrick, uh, Patrick Klingman. And he, he's, he caught my attention. What, what you might not know is every, well, every so often, more like every other month or two, we have dog training classes that take place here in the church and i just left the dog training class where i met all the puppies this is one of my favorite things to do i get to meet the puppies and give them pets and a treat and and then one of our members make dog bandanas and so we can give them a gift from the church but part of the reason i'm there is uh scott who runs the class wanted me to come do a blessing of the dogs to just meet the dogs and then pray over them they're god's creature too and we oftentimes forget that God loves all of God's creation. And so I love the opportunity to meet the dogs, to give them a bandana. I, it's where I'm allowed to go in and pet them. I see them when they're in their training. I leave them alone. Um, it's one of my favorite things to do, to meet all the people who brought their dogs and who find this church to be a place for themselves to encounter a safe place to learn with their pet and to work on bettering their relationship and their training. And there's a lot of analogies that come from that. We have to learn through success and trial and error. And, and as owners, they're walking the dogs. The dogs don't always listen and they got to learn to listen to one another and to deal with distractions like a pastor coming in and interrupting their class one night causes the dogs to bark and get all excited. And they're supposed to be in class being good and they're so excited to meet a new person just like I am. They probably pick up my energy. If I had a tail, it would wag. And there's all kinds of these things. Well, there's analogies for us in this life. Sometimes we're distracted. We're supposed to be going one way, but we're still learning and we're still excited or we're enthusiastic. And we're not sure how best to deal with all the things that are happening in our life. And then there's the obstacles that are hard to overcome. Like how do you overcome the obstacles of learning to deal with a leash or training yourself to listen to new commands and and that's part of the way that we go through walking through our relationship with God, that spiritual journey of trying to figure out how best to learn to follow God and to learn to do things God's way. We can have successes and, and good classes, and then other times we just get stuck struggling. And it, it reminded me of learning on the go and also how I started to think of my journey towards ministry. Oftentimes, I would look back at the number of years I worked in the secular business world, um, specifically running a bunch of buyer, payer, car dealerships, and which is an interesting place to start on my road to ministry. Um, I learned a lot during that time, but sometimes during my transition into pastoral ministry, I'd be in classes with people who have already served in ministry 10, 15 years, and I was just starting, and I felt like I was so far behind, and I wonder why God had me start there in that place and why I was so far behind. I had to learn a lot, and one of those days I realized that it was actually God's plan to teach me how to be the best pastoral ministry leader I can be by using the experiences I had prior to getting here. God was preparing me for this place all along. And what I saw as things getting in the way or obstacles were instead things that were helping get me prepared for where God needed me to be now. I wish I could see things the way God does, but I can't. More often than I get stuck in what's happening right now and I get worried or I'm fearful about the future, holding on to the past and wondering in this present morning where the heck God is um, and when God's going to show up to fix all the problems that I see, but it seems like are never going to fix themselves. Obstacles indeed. Obstacles in our faith, obstacles in our journey. And more often than not, what we find is that God is using those obstacles. God hasn't placed them there, but instead God uses them to help us grow, to redirect our footsteps towards being singly focused to him in his way. And so God wastes nothing, none of the choices we make, none of the sufferings that we endure, nothing in this life is wasted. God reworks all those difficulties, all the obstacles, all those things that get in the way into something new. And so then the question begins to be for each of us, how do we embrace obstacles? 
How do I look at the things that are happening and instead of seeing them as things that are out of order or in the way, instead, how do I look at things differently? How do I see problems as opportunities is one thing I've learned in the past in sales. <laughs> um, how do we look at the picture completely differently so that we don't see problems, but instead opportunities where we don't see obstacles, but opportunities for growth, where we don't see limits in what God can do, but instead the abundance that God's love can meet out because his cup runs over. That's what this is talking about here today as Patrick is talking about the obstacles in his life and how those obstacles helped him to see his own life differently and to accomplish good things. He points us to James chapter one, verses two and three, which say, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. How do we keep on keeping on? How do we, we keep seeking God's way on earth as it is in heaven, no matter what we face? How do we keep pushing forward to win the race, as Paul would say? We each have an invitation to never give up, to keep doing the next right thing, as I'm often prone to say. And so I invite you to persevere, to Face the obstacles that you are dealing with, whatever they may be in your life, whatever you're struggling with or whatever suffering you're enduring, to not do it without meaning, but instead see it as an opportunity to grow, to keep seeking God's face and will no matter what it is you face. That's where growth can be found. That's where meaning can be found, even in the things that seem meaningless or purposeless. God is with us in and through it all. That's what Emmanuel means, God with us. Let's see what Patrick says. For years, I viewed health issues, career setbacks, and other difficulties as frustration, interruptions to the life I wanted. Every time I overcame a tough situation, another one sprang up, slowing my progress. However, God helped change my attitude towards such challenges through an unlikely sport, dog agility. For over a decade, I ran alongside Portuguese water dogs through winding courses filled with jumps, tunnels, and other obstacles. In agility competitions, speed is less important than successfully navigating each obstacle, both in dog agility and in life. I have learned that what is most difficult can prove most important, and thankful we do not endure trials alone. Today's reading from James teaches us that perseverance is developed through the testing of our faith during life's trials and is key to making us mature and complete. It also reminds us that God's guidance is available to all who seek it. Much like my dogs could master difficult agility courses when they sought my direction, I have discovered that I can better handle changes when I challenges when I direct my attention towards God. When we keep our focus on God, we can find pure joy even in life's most unwanted interruptions. Yeah, just like the dog training and the training of the Portuguese water dogs and the agility courses, we all have to learn new skills. And sometimes we measure success by the wrong metrics. Sometimes it's not faster that always wins the race. And sometimes getting where you need to be, such as my idea of thinking that I should have been in my 20s when I started ministry rather than my late 30s. Well, no, I was right on time. God is using everything in your life to rework you into the best version of yourself you can be. So don't throw your hands up and wonder where God is. Instead say, all right, God, how are you with me in and through this, reworking this too to something good or new? And even if it is terrible suffering and tragedy, don't see that as in the way. See that as an opportunity to reveal the depth of your character and faith that you can persevere even through the hard things, that you can face the hardest things, not because of how strong you are, but instead because of how great God is and can get you through no matter what it is you face. That can change everything and give you something to work for. As I deal with people facing these hard things and wondering about purpose, one of the things I encourage them to do is say, you know what, here's an opportunity for you to demonstrate your faith to others by not wondering where God is and throwing your hands up and, and getting discouraged. Instead, here's an opportunity for you to demonstrate how to face hard things well so that when others look at you, they're amazed and see the, and know and come to know God more fully because of how strong you were in your faith. 
not in overcoming the problem, but in allowing that problem to exist and still not giving up and continuing to persevere. That's an amazing legacy to leave indeed. So how will you persevere? What is it that you need to persevere through? And how will you face hard things, no matter what they may be, with God on your side, never giving up? I leave that with you today in God's name, in Christ's name. Amen. Our focus today is those facing challenges and the thought for the day is focusing on God will help me find joy no matter my circumstances, which is exactly what we need to do. Let's pray. Dear God, help us to see our difficult circumstances through your eyes, knowing that our struggles can help us grow to be more like Jesus. Help each of us to see as you see, to, to know that you are with us, God, through even the most difficult times and that you waste nothing that though things may not be ideal to us, that you can rework these situations into something beautiful, or at least something that challenges us, shapes us, and forces us to grow deeper in our resilience and ability to persevere with you. In your gracious and holy name we pray. Amen. Go out, face things well, and do not fear. God is with you. Have a good night.